Hi all, welcome to part 3 of the video lecture on ER model. See what we discussed in the last part is about this entity and attributes. Hope you remember. Entity is the real world object or thing that we are interested uh, from the mini world in which we are trying to store in the database. And attributes are the properties of the entity. And uh, that itself we saw some classification like a composite versus atomic attribute that is whether you can divide that attribute into small small subparts or not. And you can go for some hierarchy of composite um, attribute right. So that is what we discussed in the last video. And uh, single value versus multi valued attribute like a phone number one person can have more than one uh, phone numbers right. Sometimes uh, age and all uh, the values can be a single one. Now here we are discussing something called a stored versus derived attribute and some other variations ok. So you know is, uh, sometimes you don't have to store all the attributes for example age of a person if you want you can store it but over time this age will vary right. So it is always better to store only his date of birth. So date of birth is something fixed that you can store for every person different different date of birth that you can permanently store in your database. So date of birth will be your stored uh, attribute. Now, if you know the date of birth and the current date, definitely you can calculate the age, right? So, you can just write some application uh, program, some few programming lines you can write and so simply by um, uh, can taking the current date and the date of birth, you can calculate the exact age of that person, maybe some year difference or something more, more accurately. So, that's enough. So, you don't have to store this age attribute physically in the database. But you can store the data date of birth. Okay, so that age attribute is now called as the derived attribute. From the stored attribute, we are trying to derive it with the help of the current date in this particular case. It's so like that other cases are also there. So whether you want to actually store the data or you can derive it from the already stored information. So that is the next classification. So in some cases, two or more attribute values are related. Right, related in the sense that age and date of birth, right? For example, the age and uh, birth date of a person. For a particular person entity, the value of the age can be determined, age can be determined from the current date and the uh, date of birth, okay? So that you understood. So the age attribute is now called as a derived one and is said to be derived from the date of birth, which is a stored one, fine? Age is a derived one and date of birth is a stored one. Some attribute values can be derived from the related entities also. For example, if you want to know how many employees are there in a particular department, you, you have two choices. Either you can keep it as a separate attribute. But actually, we don't have to store it, right? So because for uh, counting, you, you can simply write some application program, some loop kind of thing, and you can count how many entities are how many employees are associated with this particular department say a department with a department number you can select all employees that belongs to this particular department number and you can take the count so how to select uh, information from the database and all we will see okay so we have a nice way of doing it some selection query we will write and with that all employees belong to a particular department uh, using some kind of condition you can select and then you can count the number so you don't have to store this number of employees as a separate attribute again it can be derived from by counting the number of employees related to that particular department see so that about stored and derived attribute. So three main classification of attributes that alone they can ask you like uh, uh, the cause symbol versus uh, the atomic versus composite attribute, single valued versus multi valued attribute and stored versus derived attribute. Now another thing, so key attribute also we will see maybe in the next video. So here we were going to see something called a null value. So when we are having a null value, uh, null means uh, you know you are not mentioning a particular value instead you are keeping. So it's a, some kind of you you can initialize an integer variable say with a zero something like that. So here by default we will initialize info I mean in the database information if some information is not there you can use this null okay so typically we are using it in two different contexts one thing is like uh, this particular attribute is not applicable for this particular entity say uh, if you are looking at uh, that uh, employee uh, employee database um, say you can think about if something is not applicable to a particular person maybe a co college degree that particular person may not have hold a college degree he may uh, go on up to that old standard something you don't have a college degree then uh, what you will do you will keep it as null null means I so oh, oh, here what is the meaning of null that college degree attribute is not applicable to this person because he is not holding it but it is up to his like whether he is holding it or not so you can't say that it is missing or something it is 
not applicable to this person because he did never gone to any any college degree like that now another case is sometimes you don't know whether this person is having uh, i mean college degree field is something uh, that is not applicable case only unknown thing is like a say mobile number field so when you collected that information from the user it, it may be the case that user forgot to give you that mobile number so currently you don't know it's unknown to you that whether that particular person is having a mobile number or not like that okay so like that a null value so in in all these cases like uh, uh, you can use the null as a default value so two, two cases are there mainly first thing it is this particular attribute is not applicable to this particular entity so that that uh, value corresponding to that entity at the corresponding to that attribute will be null for that person another thing is this particular attribute is unknown for me currently so i i don't have a value for it i don't know it right so i will simply keep it as null so that about it so the first case is like a particular entity may not have an applicable value for example another example is like apartment number means uh, if it is an apartment kind of building the definitely apartment number will be there but in the normal single family house and all apartment number will not be there so that is something not applicable for this kind of a homes similarly college degree attribute it is not applicable to all um, some set of people okay so like that Uh, another another example so in such cases we will be using this null null can also be used if we do not know the value of the attribute of a particular entity for example if we do not know whether this person is having a phone number or not so the unknown category so accordingly the meaning of the former null the first category so this here the null is having the meaning not applicable and uh, here the null is having the meaning unknown okay now this unknown category of null can further classified into two the first case arises when it is known that i i know that this attribute value exist definitely it exist but it is missing somehow for example you know height of a, a person everybody will have a height right but this particular person forgot to give his height so it is missing it is missing that doesn't mean that it is uh, unknown to me in the sense actually it, it is actually existing value but uh, some cases like a mobile number or and all if you are taking some people may not be taking mobile number and that time that particular value is not existing okay so but i don't i don't know whether it is existing or not but the first category of unknown i know that it is existing but i don't know what is the value of height for that particular person second example i know that i don't know whether it is existing or not that itself i don't know like a mobile number and all okay so anyway both are coming under the unknown category and sometimes it may be not null so whether it is not null or unknown category such attribute values you can mention as null so that is a conclusion fine now one last thing i uh, just want to tell you about the complex attribute complex attribute in the sense as the name says you know already uh, single and multi valued which you find like uh, tougher like complex so definitely that multi valued right because uh, single valued just a single value will come but here uh, multiple values are coming right so multi valued sorry multi valued attribute is found to be complex and another thing is single versus uh, atomic versus uh, composite attribute you can see that the composite is more complex right now if i have a combination of these two this is what we call as a complex attribute so complex attribute is multi valued and composite attribute together will nest at uh, different levels so you will get a very complex attribute it's a single attribute but it is having uh, some sub parts as well as the sub parts itself may be multi valued and that multi valued itself may be uh, sub parts like that you can have uh, any level of nesting on on example we will see so in general the composite and the attribute multi valued attributes can be nested arbitrarily at any at any level okay so this is what is happening the composite and multi valued attribute and typically this notation we will use for composite attribute composite attribute we will use this notation i mean just opening and closing parentheses and this kind of a curly brace braces we will use for multi valued attribute so the notation you keep in mind multi valued attribute we will use that curly braces and uh, opening and closing parentheses we will use for composite attribute and uh, accordingly you can have that uh, represent that nesting so this notation is important such attributes are called a complex attribute okay for example if a person can have more than one residence so some people may have more than one residence right 
so the person is having more than one residence and each residence can have a a single separate address but multiple phone numbers single address and uh, multiple phone numbers same residence i mean the particular person is having two different different uh, residence and one residence having associated with that one phone number and another residence is associated with the two phone number like that multiple phone number uh, single residence can associate with and an attribute if you are looking at the uh, address phone okay so i am keeping it as a single attribute which is containing both address and phone information so there will be more than one residence and each residence itself is containing more than one phone number for a particular person so now it is very complex so if you want you can split it but as an example for complex attribute we can take this okay so the phone number and address can further be composite also okay so like that uh, all this nesting are there so this is how you can represent an attribute like this so address phone is the attribute i am dealing with right now for this attribute i have a uh, so you know first of all this address phone number together one person can have a uh, more than one address and phone number pair so that is why this notation i am using for saying that this address phone attribute itself is multi value now if you are looking at the address phone attribute in, inside that you are keeping the phone number and address both information here so address phone is a composite attribute from here to here okay address phone is a let me use a different color so that so the address phone is a composite attribute uh, containing the phone number and address okay fine now if you are looking at the phone number the phone number alone is a composite attribute containing the area code and the phone number okay so you know every phone number you can think about uh, these two things the, some area code will be there some phone number will be there now similarly if you are looking at the address field that itself like uh, we already seen there is some street address and there is some city there is some state and there is some zip code so like that it is finishing here now if you are looking at the street address alone you can see that the street number will be there the street name will be there apartment number will be there like that it is another composite attribute so many things we clubbed here the address phone attribute as a whole is multi valued and also it is composite okay it is multi valued and composite composite is in the sense it is further subdivided into phone and address part and phone alone is multi valued so here you can see another thing the phone alone is multi valued that is why this notation is coming and also it is composite in the sense it is further divided into area code and phone number now if you are looking at address field that alone is composite in the sense it is divided further into street address city state and zip and the street address alone again composite which is further divided into street number street name and apartment number hope it is clear right so something like that you can give us an example in no need to give the examples as i explained so you can take any example something uh, some local information also you can represent there is no issue but it has to be clear so if somebody is asking you what is complex attribute it's a mix of uh, composite and multi valued attribute together so that is a conclusion so like that at, at any level of nesting you can achieve so the thing we discussed is mainly about attribute the first classification is composite versus atomic in the previous video we saw this and now another one single valued versus multi valued and uh, here we saw this stored versus derived and finally mix of this composite and multi value together we call as the complex attribute okay and then there is a concept of null and there is one more thing very important that is the key attribute and that we will explore in the next video yeah that about it thanks for watching